Hey everyone, my name is Jose, aka Joe Engineer, and today I'm going to show you how to make your gauges a little bit brighter and a little easier to read at night on your air-cooled Porsche 911 by replacing the incandescent bulbs with LED bulbs. So let's get to it. Thank you once again for joining me. Uh, this is a really easy modification that uh, applies to all years of air-cooled Porsche 911s all the way up to 1989 through the end of the G-body uh, generation. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about the 964 and 993 setups, so can't really comment on those. And on the earlier cars, uh, through 1989, especially some of the really, really early cars, and probably 912s as well, there are slight variations in the uh, amounts of bulbs in the back of each gauge as well as their locations. But the general methodology on how to replace them is pretty, uh, pretty similar. So this should apply for all flavors of early uh, 911s through 1989. And essentially what we're going to be doing is pulling out the gauges and replacing all of the bulbs on the back of the gauge uh, that look like this, little, little teeny weeny incandescent bulbs with, with LEDs that have the same uh, mounting base, but have uh, LED chips on, on the sides and on top. So hopefully our gauges will get a little bit brighter. I actually, I bought these uh, bulbs uh, many years ago, when I first got the car, stashed them away and never got around to installing them because I didn't really drive the car at night up until now. And now that I drive it more at night, it bothers me a little more and I want to be able to see my gauges. So I decided, hey, why not? This is a perfect time to do it. Uh, these bulbs come from a place called carmagic.us. That is literally the URL, carmagic.us. And I've used them before for various other um, uh, electrical accessories. They have a lot of um, different styles of LED headlights, uh, bulb kits, um, and uh, lots of general electrical stuff for, um, for old air cool 911s. So check them out when you get a chance. Otherwise, I hope that you enjoy watching the installation process. Let me show you what I have to work with here. This is as bright as they get. I don't know if you can see them through the camera very well, but um, this is not not bright at all. And uh, if you if you pull the switch, they they turn on. And then if you twist the the switch, it's a, a variable resistor, so you can change the you can dim them or make them brighter. And this is as bright as they will go. They are barely legible. Um, the only way I could see these gauges any better is if there is a lifted truck behind me, or if I'm in a, you know, on a part, uh, sitting at a red light of a brightly lit uh, intersection or something like that. But yeah, this is not acceptable, especially if I'm driving in a, in a spirited fashion on like a dark canyon or, or something I want to have, uh, a much clearer view of the uh, information that the gauges are displaying. So here's a before and I'll show you an after and then we can compare them side by side. First things first, it goes without saying that when before performing any electrical work on your Porsche, disconnect the negative terminal on your battery. Now that your battery is disconnected, we're going to have to pop the gauges out uh, from inside the cabin. Now, if you have a stock steering wheel, then it's gonna be a lot closer to the dash here and it might be kind of cumbersome to, to work with the gauge and the short wiring. So you may need to remove the steering wheel. In our case, we have a, an aftermarket uh, wheel. So not really a, a, an issue for us. And I also have a big, uh, steering wheel spacer. I think it's like 40 or 50 millimeters. So we've got quite a bit of room in here, so we don't need to worry uh, about that. So 
Assuming you now have the wheel out of the way or that the wheel is not an issue for you, then all, all you would need to do is take the gauges and pull them out from the dash. Now they are simply pressed in with uh, a rubber gasket uh, that goes around the gauge. Now, they're, they'll probably be in here pretty tight, especially if they haven't moved in years, but you can see this one moves a little bit. And actually, I can wiggle it, and it's starting to come out. There we go. Here's one. Be very careful so you don't rip the gaskets so that you can reuse them later. But there's, there's one, for example. There's one gauge. Now, once you have a gauge out, you can reach behind and press the help uh, push from behind and push out the next gauge. Like this one. See, now this one has come out. Ever so carefully. Be very careful to not Pull and disconnect any of the wires uh, right now. I can come back and press the next one out. There we go. Oh yeah, it's satisfying. If you absolutely want to, you could get them started potentially with a little plastic trim tool of sorts and kind of, you know, wedging under the body of the gauge here just to just to get it to wiggle. I generally don't like to do this because I don't want to damage anything that's visible, either the dash or the um, anodized bezel here. But if you absolutely have to, you can do that as well. Here's another one coming out. Also, if these things are just stuck in there and they, oh, there we go. I was dropping quite a bit. If these things absolutely will not budge. Wow, I got lucky here. Okay, yeah, these all came out pretty easily. But let's say these things are stuck in there, especially the bigger ones, because they have more surface area holding them in. If there's no freaking way that you can get these guys out, then what you can do is Open your frunk, take everything out, take the carpet out, and if you have an, if you have a car that has the uh, fresh air fan and and AC stuff uh, deleted back here, then what you can do is remove this cover and you'll have access to the back of the gauges so you can just push them out. In my case, you can see I have my fresh air blower and all the other uh, ducting in there for the defroster and everything. So what you can still do is reach in here. I've already taken them out, but you can reach the, the two gauges closest to the window. Um, so you could push, push one, shove your hand way in there push one out, push the next one out, and then, like I did, just reach in from the hole in the dash and push out the next ones. So that's another strategy you can use in case they are fully 100% stuck in there. In terms of what order to work on these gauges, I don't think it really matters, uh, but for me, because I have the most access in this corner from either from the front or from the back of the gauges, I'm gonna start with the gauge that has the least amount of access. So I'll start first with the with the clock. Now, this clock has only one, one light bulb in it right here. So you should be able to pull this out, take the bulb out, and put in the new um, the new LED bulb into the socket. One thing to keep in mind is that the instructions that come with the LEDs state that that the clock bulb has uh, the the depth of the bulb is um, is less than the depth on the other gauges so this kit came with a little spacer 
So I have to put this little spacer on top of the bulb and then install it into the um, into here. Uh, another thing that the instructions say is that the LED should be oriented so that it shines left and right. Now, if you're not familiar with LEDs, um, so incandescent light bulbs are very much like a candle that when they light up, they, they project light in all directions. LEDs are a little more directional. So uh, you can see on the LEDs, they have these little yellow chips on them. And the yellow part, this the little LED chip, those that's the part that lights up. But, uh, they do shine brighter in one direction than the other. For example, this chip here that we're looking at is going to be much brighter in this direction versus that direction. So uh, the instructions state to have this chip and the one on the other side to be pointing in left and right. Uh, left and right uh, oriented on the clock. These three LED chips on the end are going to be pointing directly at the uh, driver and passenger. So left, right, and pointing at us. So for this clock bulb here, I'm going to take the bulb out of the back just with my fingernails and kind of work it out slowly. There we go. And there is the there is the bulb in the socket. So the way these come out is the bulb is inside of this uh, spring-loaded socket. So what you do is you push it in, do a quarter turn, and then the whole thing comes out. You can put this down. I can take the bulb. And just to test it out, let's line it up with the two notches on the socket. It only goes in one way. Put it in, quarter turn, and now it's held in there. Now, now that it's in there, let's put the little spacer here over the socket, like that, all the way down to the base of the socket. Here's another quick close-up of the, the clock bulb. So after you insert the LED, you turn it a quarter turn and uh, it'll stay in place. Then you slip this uh, spacer or sleeve all the way to the end of the, of the socket here. And you wanna make sure that the, that chip is pointing straight to the side and that one too which means that the chips in the front will be oriented like this. Not like this, because then it'll be pointed up and down. So, like that. And now, should be installed. Also, a good rule of thumb to note is to uh, look at the colors of the wires back here, um, as it will help you identify um, the purpose of, of them all. So Porsche used black for power, brown for ground, and most of the, in general, the gauge illumination wires were this black, black wire with a blue stripe on them. So that's how you can ID the uh, illumination uh, lights on the rest of the gauges. Now I'm going to push this little guy back in. Leave it in there kind of loosely. I'm not going to press it all the way in. Uh, because the wiring on the gauges is all interconnected, now that I've put it back in its place, I'll have a little bit more wire length to work with on the, the next gauge. Also remember to that your battery negative cable needs to be uh, disconnected once again before you proceed with the rest of the gauges. So back here we have, we have on this one, on my SC speedometer, 
We have two illumination gauges. We have or two illumination bulbs. One down there and one up here, and we'll replace those the same way that we did um, uh, this one, but without the spacers. No rocket science here going on. Just pull the bulb out, out of the back of the gauge, quarter turn, remove it, grab the LED, quarter turn back in the socket, back in the back of the gauge, and same operation with the other one. So as I was pulling the um, the tack out, I noticed that there is a little bit of interference between, uh, because of the angle of the steering column, there isn't a lot of clearance between the gauge, the bottom of the dash and the top of the steering column, in particular the, the clamshells that, that cover the, the uh, switch mechanisms in here. So I'm gonna have to remove the steering wheel to get the hub off which will then expose the screws holding these top two clamshells. There's a screw on each side holding the clamshells to each other. And there are two screws on top and two screws on the bottom holding each respective clamshell to the column. But you can't get to those unless you remove the hub. So, oh well, let's get the steering wheel off and uh, get cracking. So how to remove your horn quickly. If you have an OE steering wheel, you pull off the horn pad and you should have access to um, the hex nut, the, the horn uh, wiring beneath it and the hex nut that holds the wheel and the hub to the column. If you have an aftermarket wheel, like the Momo style ones, you can just pull off the horn pad or the horn button. Disconnect the two wires for the horn probably this one and maybe the yellow one from here. Move the horn button out of the way and then you'll see the hex nut, 27 millimeter hex that is holding the hub to the column. Before you remove that, make sure that you make a couple of marks with a Sharpie. Let's see if you can see them here. There is a black mark on the shaft right there where my fingernail is and another black mark up there um, on the hub so that when you remove this hex nut you will have you can put them back on the correct spline so they're in the correct orientation so that your wheel is in the uh, your wheel is nice and straight with the wheels pointing straight so make sure you do that and if it doesn't have a mark then add them on there with a sharpie before you remove the hex nut. When you are removing the steering wheel, um, remember to not have the steering column cranked all the way to full lock and also do not torque against the ignition steering wheel lock. Otherwise you risk breaking the, um, either one of them. And then after you take the nut off, uh, jiggle it back and forth, jiggle the steering wheel back and forth until it uh, comes off and don't lose the wavy washer or the nut. Now that you have the steering wheel off, you can remove the upper clamshell and see if there's enough clearance for the speedo to come out. There is a screw, a tiny flathead screw on either side, holding these two clamshells together. And then you can also remove you have to remove these two uh, for the horn contact. Once you remove those, you'll have access to the, uh, the screws to remove this guy. Don't lose them, don't drop them in the column. This guy out of the way. It's a little ground wire, and there are the two tiny screws holding the the clamshell up. 
on here. Okay, this should come out now. Very carefully. Ooh, yeah. Came out. With a little piece of debris. And now. Ta da! All right. On the tack, there are three illumination LEDs. You can see them. You can see the red uh, sockets. However, if you recall earlier, only this one has the uh, black with a blue stripe wire. And this one over here also has the black with a blue stripe. This one has a white with a blue stripe. Now, if we compare the front of the gauge, this one's in the center. This is like top center of the gauge. So that one lights up your high beam indicator. So I think it, it, it uh, shines through this lens here. We don't really, we don't want to mess with this one. This one's just fine. It's just a dot, a circle of light. But the two, um, these two directly in front of the gauge, they sort of point to nothing. They're kind of here between the five and six and sort of here between the one and two. So uh, they are general backlighting. They're just going to light up the uh, this entire housing. Now, in order to keep with the methodology and the instructions, the instructions say they're a little vague, um, but they're explaining to essentially take the LEDs and point them to the sides, point the LED chips to, you know, to point um, away from the center. So... What I'm going to do on mine is we're going to ignore this center bulb because that's the high beam indicator and the ones on the sides, we're going to point the LED chip that way and that way, kind of tangentially um, to the edges of, of the circle here. I'll spare you the rest of the bulb installations. They are literally the same process. You pull the socket assembly out the back of each gauge replace the bulb the exact same way and make sure that it's oriented in the correct orientation before putting it back into the gauge housing. So on the oil temperature and oil pressure uh, gauges, there's a lot more going on behind the gauge because you've got two, two, um, two gauges in one and then two indicator lamps. So there are a ton of wires back here. Uh, in the interest of not screwing anything up, be very, very careful. They're short and it's kind of tight back here, but there are two bulbs. There's a bulb here and another one on the other side here that similarly kind of point to nothing. They're sort of behind the dial of each of, of, of each of these two dials. So I'm going to install them the same way as I did the tack like this, with the chips pointing tangentially to the circle, not radially towards the center. Last but not least, the fuel tank and oil level gauge only has one LED on it, uh, just like the clock. And just like the clock, you're supposed to install the LED so that the chips shine left and right. That's it. That's all we got to do. Now, as long as we have the steering wheel off and the gauges all positioned here loosely, let's reconnect the... Let's reconnect the battery. Flip the switch and see what the gauges look like. At this point, if there's any, if they look a little weird and you have some dim spots, you can go back and turn the bulbs in whatever direction you want to improve the lighting. But um, yeah, let's take a look, see what they look like. Okay, moment of truth. One, two, three, go. 
Yeah, that's not bad at all. Quite a bit brighter than uh, before, but not unusually bright the way sometimes LEDs tend to do. So if I didn't know any better, I would not believe that these are LEDs, that they're just simply, you know, brighter bulbs or bulbs that are in good shape. So not bad. I'm pretty happy with the way uh, this uh, this turned out. Hopefully the bulbs last a long time and um, I do have one spare in the kit. These are looking pretty good. Let's button everything back up now. I'm just gonna push these in and uh, call it good. Let's see this guy, should I, should I, should I? Hmm, nah. Not really into that. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Position the clamshell on top, attach with the two inner screws on top of the steering column, and then attach the two side screws holding the two clamshells together. Then you can put the horn contact pad back in. While you're in here, make sure you put um, a little dab of grease on the horn contact pad and on the horn contact ring on the hub before reinstalling everything. Now line up your original two marks on the steering wheel hub and the steering column so that you get the wheel positioned in the right place. Put it on the column, put on the big wavy, wavy washer and the hex nut back on the uh, column. Now make sure once again that you don't torque against the um, steering column at full lock or against the ignition lock so you don't break anything and torque down the nut to 50 newton meters or 36 foot pounds. Reconnect your horn button and you're done. Okay, so what's the final verdict with everything all buttoned up? Here we go. Yep. Still looking good. If I zoom back, you can see where the steering wheel blocks the view of the gauges, but um, if I move my head around a little bit, they are much, much brighter than, than before. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that result. They look awesome. Thanks again for joining me for another video. If this helped you out at all, please um, like and subscribe and share. And um, thank you so much. Hope to see you on the next one.